Hey, Algebra students. In this lesson, we are going to be talking about compound inequalities and how to solve them. This is going to be a really simple, straightforward lesson because pretty much all of our solutions to compound inequalities are going to be graphs. And these are the easy graphs, the ones that happen on individual number lines. Okay, so I think you're going to find that this lesson is very, very straightforward. But before we begin, we do have some terminology to learn. We're going to start by defining what in the world a compound inequality is. A compound inequality is just two inequalities combined with the word and or or. Okay, so we might say that x is less than 5 and x is greater than 3. Notice I said the word and between two different statements of inequality. That's a compound inequality. There are two types of compound inequalities. One of them is called a conjunction. A conjunction is a compound inequality that uses the word and, and a conjunction converges on a set of solutions that's bounded between two extremes. You're going to see what I'm talking about when we actually start graphing these. But it's important to realize that conjunction converges. Disjunction diverges. A disjunction is um, a set of compound inequalities that uses or, and it diverges away from a bounded set of non-solutions. In a disjunction, the solutions usually stretch from like negative infinity all the way up to positive infinity. And then there's just a region somewhere in the middle there that there's no answers in that region. That's a disjunction. Now, what in the world am I talking about? Let's work some practice problems and see what some graphs of these look like. And you'll get to see what a conjunction and a disjunction actually is. So what were our instructions are, write and graph a compound inequality to represent the statement for A, B, and C. Letter A, all real numbers that are greater than 5 and less than 10. You hear that word and in there? That means we're dealing with a conjunction. Okay. If I was going to write a compound inequality, I would say that X is greater than 5 and x is less than 10. Hey, one consideration, do I have to put any and equal to signs in here? Not if it doesn't tell me to. All right, let's take a look at what this one actually looks like here. So x is greater than 5, and x is less than 10. Now, here's the funny thing about the conjunction inequality. We could write it out like this if we wanted to. We can even write it in reverse order if we wanted to. x is less than 10, and x is greater than 5. And inequalities can always be combined into just one expression. Take a look at this. Do you see how this is the exact same expression as what's up above? X is greater than 5. That means that 5 is the lowest possible value that X could possibly take on. And technically, it can't take on 5. Remember, 5 is the lower bound, but 5 has to be less than X. So technically, it's... Anything, even a minuscule amount um, greater than 5 could be the solution, but not 5 itself. 5 is the lowest possible number, though. And then I'm going to say that five, so 5 is less than x, and x has to be less than 10. Notice that I can write the compound inequality with and. A conjunction can always be written in one statement like this instead of even using the word and. Can't do that with disjunctions. Disjunctions always use the word or, but you can do that with conjunctions. All right, let's graph this. Now, notice I set up above that it converges. A conjunction converges, and this is what it's going to look like. So on my number line, here I have 5. My number is going to be greater than 5, but less than 10. I'm going to circle, open circle at 5 because it's uh, 5 is less than, or x is greater than, it's not equal to. Open circle at 10 because it's not equal to, and I shade everything in between. So 8 should be a solution. Let's just check and make sure. Is 8 greater than 5? Yes. Is 8 less than 10? Yes. This entire set of solutions in here, I can choose any of the numbers that are shaded, and it will be a solution to the inequality. All right, letter B, recommended cooking time for lasagna from 16 minutes to 20 minutes. 16 minutes would be included in the solution because they're recommending 16 minutes as a minimum, 20 minutes as a maximum. Let's take a look at this one. So the uh, equation would look like this. And I should say inequality, compound inequality. 
16 is less than or equal to t. My lowest possible number is 16. Highest possible number is 20. And anything outside of that is not a solution. Okay, notice it's less than or equal to on both of these. So that means that when I graph this, it's going to have closed circles, one at 16, one at 20, shade everything in between. Would 17 be a solution? Yes, 17 is greater than 16. 17 is less than 20. All right, letter C. Cell phone company has a policy that charges a monthly fee of $20 plus five cents per minute of usage or text message. The monthly cell phone bill must be between 40 and $50. Write a compound inequality that describes the situation. Solve the inequality to find the number of minutes that can be used to keep the monthly bill within the desired amount. So uh, it's going to be 20 plus 0.5M has to be, uh, let's see, the monthly cell phone bill must be between 40 and 50. So that means that I have to spend more than $40. Uh, so it's going to be 20 plus 0.5M is greater than or equal to 40. It has to be less than or equal to 50. Is that an or or an and statement? Hmm. It's going to be an and because it has to be between. It has to converge on this little range. Let's take a look at what this one looks like. So uh, the first thing that we're going to do is write out our first part of our compound inequality. 40 is less than or equal to 20 plus 0.5x. And then that's got to be less than or equal to 50. Now, to solve this, I need to subtract 20 from all sides of the inequality. I'm going to subtract 20 from this, 20 from this, 20 from this. Okay? Um, I'm just going to put that in a separate text box so I could show my work here a little more thoroughly. So what that's going to look like is 20 is less than or equal to... 0.05x, which is less than or equal to 50. Uh, I'm sorry, 30, because I needed to subtract 20 from 50. I subtracted 20 from everything. Now I need to divide everything by 0 0.05, or I'm dividing by 1 20th. 0 0.05 is the same as 1 20th. Dividing by 1 20th is the same as multiplying by 20. So this is going to become 20 times 20 is 400 is less than or equal to X, which is less than or equal to 600. Uh, in other words, what we're saying is in order to keep my bill within the range of 40 to $50, we have to use 400 to 600 minutes. Um, let's see if I did that right. There we are. So here's the deal. This is going to be exactly like what we've been doing with inequalities before. We can subtract something from both sides, add something to both sides, divide both sides. But here in an and conjunction inequality, uh, there's going to be three sides and you need to do the same thing to all three sides in order to get the right answer. OK, um, also, if you multiply or divide by a negative, it switches all of the signs. It switches this sign. It switches this sign. Okay, so we can still work these. Hey, what if you're super uncomfortable with what we just did there? Well, remember, if you don't like working a three-sided inequality, all you need to do is just change it back into like what this was. You can write it with an and statement and then just work each inequality statement separate. This could have been written... Uh, 20 plus 0.5x is greater than or equal to 40. You could have solved that for 400. It would have been uh, x is greater than or equal to 400. Then we could have done uh, 20 plus 0.5x is less than or equal to 50. We would have solved that for x is less than or equal to 600. Uh, we could have done it separately. It would have been just fine. All right, write and graph a compound inequality to represent the statement. All real numbers greater than 6 or less than one. Now that we're dealing with a disjunction, uh, here's what a disjunction is going to look like. So first of all, it's going to be greater than six or less than one. There is no way to write this in one statement like we could with a conjunction. So it always has to have actually the two inequalities with the word or in between. X is less than one or X is greater than six. 
What is this going to look like when graphed? Well, it's going to diverge away from a set of values that aren't solutions. So if I choose anything within this middle range, these will not work. Let's say I chose three. Is three greater than six? No. Is three less than one? No. It doesn't meet either of the criteria. It has to be one or the other to be a solution. It's neither, so therefore it's not a solution. Hey, what about something shaded? Zero. Let's choose zero. It's in the shaded region on the left. Is zero greater than six? No. But it says or, or is it less than one? Yes. And because it's less than one, it's a solution. Same with 10. 10 is greater than six. It's not less than one, but it's greater than six. So it's a solution because it says or. Letter E, all real numbers greater than or equal to five or less than or equal to zero. Well, again, this is really easy to write out the inequality. X is less than or equal to zero or X is greater than or equal to five. We just wrote exactly what it said. And then we shade, because it's an or statement, we shade in opposite directions. Notice that these are filled in circles because it's or equal to, and we shade to the right, we shade to the left. Right, solve the disjunction, 5x is less than negative 5, or 6x is less than negative 18. To solve a compound inequality disjunction, you just solve each one of them separate. This one, we're going to divide both sides by 5 to get x is greater than negative 1. By the way, it stays as um, less than, hold on one second, let me just make sure. Ah, they changed the order on me, but that's okay. We'll just show the whole answer. So X is greater than negative one was the first one we solved on the left here. Notice that the sign didn't change because we didn't divide by a negative. Just because there's a negative involved doesn't mean it changes the sign. We actually have to divide by a negative to flip the sign. On this other side, I divide both sides by six. I get X is less than negative three. I solve both of them, slap the word or between them, and we're done. All right, now we need to write a compound inequality that describes each graph. If we have a diverging one, like we do in G, that's going to be or. If we have a converging one that converges on a set of values in the middle, like we do in H, that's going to be and. So for letter G, uh, this is going to be X is less than or equal to one, less than or equal because it's a filled in circle, or X is greater than two, just greater than because it's an empty circle. Let's see if I got that right. X is less than or equal to one. There is an or equal to right there. It's hard to see. Or X is greater than two. Check. All right. H is going to be X is greater than or equal to eight. And because it's a conjunction, X is less than 12. Another way to say that is my bottom number, eight, is less than or equal to X, which is less than 12. Notice that we've got it written both ways here. 8 less than or equal to x, which is less than 12. x is greater than or equal to 8, and x is less than 12. Either way is fine. And just one more thing to point out. These are really easy to check to make sure you did them right. Choose a number that is not in the range and see if it works. I'm going to choose the number 2 for this one. Is x, is 2 less than 1? No. Is 2 greater than 2? No. So therefore, 2 is not a solution here, which it shouldn't be. It's an open circle. What about the number 14 down here? Uh, is 14 greater than or equal to 8? Yes. But is 14 less than 12? No. So it can't be a solution. What about 10? 10 is, uh, let's see, 8 is less than or equal to 10. So check. And then 10 is less than 12. So just pick, it, pick numbers within the range of answers to see if they work. If they do, you know you did it right. All right, now you know how to do compound inequalities. Uh, you're ready to do number one through 30 for next time.